And when you compete for things, you think um, there are lots of people doing it, and there's sort of is this perception of safety in crowds. If a lot of people are trying to get something, it must be valuable, and therefore uh, you know it. Whereas if nobody's trying to do something, that's already uh, really really uncomfortable. Um, and I think this, um, you know, the you know the word ape already in the time of Shakespeare meant uh, both uh, primate and to imitate. And there is this rather disturbing aspect of human nature where people are ape-like, sheep-like, lemming-like, unbelievably herd-like. Um, and we're sort of attracted to doing things that other people do. We're attracted to compete um, for all these, uh, uh, and compete the most intensely for things that often uh, matter the, the least. We go for things that lots of other people are going for. and. Um, it's not that there is wisdom in crowds. It's not when lots of people are trying to do something that that's proof of uh, it being valuable. I think it's when lots of people are trying to do something that is often, um, that is often proof of insanity. There are 20,000 people a year who move to Los Angeles to become movie stars. About 20 of them make it. Um, I think the Olympics are a little bit better because you have a, you know, um, you can sort of figure out pretty quickly whether you're good or not. So it's a, there's a little bit less of a dead weight loss to society. Um, you know, um, um, you know, you're, you're, you're the sort of educational experience at a place, uh, the, the, the pre-Stanford educational experience, um, there's always sort of a non-competitive characterization where I think most of the people in this room had machine guns and they were competing with people with bows and arrows, so um, it wasn't exactly a parallel competition when you were in junior high school and high school. Um, there's always a question, does the tournament make sense as you keep going? And this is a uh, and so um, there is always this question, if people go on to grad school or postdoctoral uh, post educations, does the intensity of the competition really make sense? There's the, uh, the you know, classic uh, Henry Kissinger line that uh, um, describing his fellow faculty at, at Harvard that the, uh, um, the battles were so ferocious because the stakes were so small, describing sort of academia. And you sort of think on one level, this is a description of insanity. You know, why would people fight like crazy when the stakes are so small? But it's also, I think, simply a function of the logic of the situation. When it's really hard to differentiate yourself from other people, when the differences are, when the objective differences really are small, then uh, you have to uh, compete ferociously to maintain uh, a difference of one sort uh, or another um, that's often more imaginary than real. There's always sort of a personal uh, version of this that I, I tell where um, you know, I was sort of hyper, hyper tracked. I, you know, my eighth grade junior high school yearbook, one of my friends wrote in, you know, I, I know you'll get into Stanford in four years as a, as a sophomore. I sort of went into, went to Stanford four years later, uh, at the end of high school, uh, went to Stanford Law School. Uh, you know, ended up um, at a big law firm in uh, New York uh, where from the outside everybody wanted to get in, on the inside everybody wanted to leave. Um, and, and you had, um, and it was this very strange dynamic where after I uh, sort of realized this was maybe not the best idea, um, and I left after seven months and three days, you know, one of the people down the hall from me uh, told me, um, it's really reassuring to see you leave, Peter. I had no idea that it was possible to escape from Alcatraz, which, of course, all you had to do was go out the front door and not come back. But, um, but so much of people's identities got wrapped up in, um, in winning uh, these competitions that uh, they somehow lost sight of what was important, what was valuable. Uh, you know, competition does make you better at whatever it is that you're competing on. Because when you're competing, you're um, comparing yourself with the people around you. You're figuring out, how do I beat the people next to me? How do I do somewhat better at whatever it is they're doing? And you will get better at that thing. I'm not, I'm not questioning that. I'm not denying that. But, um, but it often comes at this tremendous price that uh, you stop asking some bigger questions about what's truly important and truly valuable. And so I would. I would say that uh, don't always go through the tiny little door that everyone's trying to rush through. Uh, maybe go around the corner and go through the vast gate that no one's taking. If you're in a completely competitive business, let's say you're trying to open a restaurant in London, uh, which is if you decide to do that after this talk this evening, and you try to get investors for your restaurant in London, this will be hard to do. And they'll say, well, you know, it's a bad business. No one makes money. Everyone just loses money when they open restaurants. Um, and you will say, well, this is totally different from any other restaurant. Uh, it, it will be the only um, British Nepalese fusion cuisine within a five block radius of the LSE. And, um, and so you sort of tell an idiosyncratic fictional story where it's, it's too small. And so because people are constantly telling these uh, fictional stories that distort what's going on, um, there is this real failure to understand the centrality of this uh, monopoly uh, versus competition dichotomy.